There is a fifth dimension. A dimension of sound. Damn it, Frank! We tell him to be quiet. I spill my hot cup of Uranus again. A dimension of sight. Hey, Arch. I'm gonna sock you in the puss. A dimension of mind. Nan Adams, is that you? Ah! Ah! Next stop, the Twilight Zone. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Fifth Dimension Twilight Zone podcast. Uh, I am uh, one of your non-waving hosts, Nick, and of course, we're here to talk Rod Sterling's favorite series and podcast, even though he's not longer alive. Okay, so hold on a second. My phone decided to decide to answer me. We're back. We're here. We're clear. We're blue. We're here at four o'clock. Not communists. We're not communists that we know of. I don't know. I'm watching True. you. Watching. I am. I am wearing red. So. <laughs> yeah, you are a Bills fan, so yeah. yeah. No. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> At least you're not a Bears fan. That's all I can say. Hey. Oh, hey. Bear. Hey. <laughs> thirteen for a thirteen with three touchdowns, and they lose. <laughs> yep. My God. That is man. that is that is the uh, joy and the beauty of the Bears. The Bears. I was like, what bears, the fuck are you talking bears, about? Bears, bears, I have no bears. idea what we're talking about here. Probably better that you don't. <laughs> I know it's the foosball. Yay! Yeah. My daughter we're does. We're talking about Bill many. Brasky. That I go son of a her. bitch. I watch her cheer, <laughs> and I have no idea who's winning half the time. <laughs> yeah, just cheer on the young. Like, did we win? Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he he, he has a flag that just says go team. He's just waving <laughs> it like this. I'm just, I'm just, it's actually, I've thought about it. Because my oldest daughter was a cheerleader too, and I always went for her to watch her cheer and cheer her on. So I'm like that guy who's always down by the cheerleaders, and it dawned on me. I was like, that could come off as weird, <laughs> but I'm paying no attention to the Jacob, game. Jacob was down there with the cheerleaders. <laughs> when it comes when it comes to you, Jacob, nothing's ever that weird. Trust nah. me. <laughs> That's why we love you. I just own it. So if Franco used to sell a shirt that said "Go Sports," maybe you can get one of them. <laughs> Go Sounds like Philip DeFranco. Sports ball. There you go. Oh, <laughs> uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, anyways, so yeah, the Twilight Zone. It's a it's a series. Sometimes there's good episodes. Sometimes there's four o'clock. It's just how this thing rolls. <laughs> so you know anyways, what? The one thing you can say about this episode is that it's four o'clock somewhere. And Triv has left the podcast. <laughs> we don't know why. <laughs> Can't get rid We're of me that easily. <laughs> I'm like that bird. But anyways, right. Not so Jacob, tr- Jacob, Triv, yes, uh, how are you guys? Not a communist, at least last time I checked. Good. It's three thirty I... here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still normal size. Same. Right. <laughs> you're you're not calling up all your all your enemies to tell them that they're going to be disowned by society. I ain't got that kind of time. Nope. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm two foot tall or not because I don't know like Sorry, scale wise. Nothing. How tall I am? They're bolted to the floor, isn't that right? Kind of, yeah, uh, kind yeah. of bolted like non-Jesus or Jesus. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, how the hell are you guys? Everything good? Everything wonderful? We have we have Raymond back. Yay! He's, uh, oh, I'm here. Woohoo! He, he said if we don't put him on this episode, he will uh, disown us and uh, never talk to us again. And then he called back and said, "I'm sorry, please put me on the episode." And I was like, "No." And then Jacob's like, damn it, why'd you make me watch this episode is what he said after that. (laughs) (laughs) Life is hard enough and you've got me watching this. I told Nick, hey, one of my least favorite episodes of all time is coming up. He's like, hey, so you're on for that one, right? (laughs) (laughs) I gave him an ultimatum. I said, you can either watch that or Jezebel. He's like, oh, God, just put me on four o'clock. Man, I can't wait for this Jezebel episode of her. And then he threatened to call my boss and tell him I'm a communist. Oh, God, (laughs) you bastard. (laughs) Yeah, I'm all about ruining the lives of others for my gain, my personal gain. Was I not? What gain? He has no gain. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, uh, do you guys think that he's got a leak in his attic a mile wide? Definitely. He's got a leak in his crawl space. Yeah, that too. (laughs) Wait a minute. (laughs) Ain't a leak. Is he he going to take the... (laughs) Is he going to take the sniff this out of the ship propeller? Is going down. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to take the stiffness out of the podcast. <laughs> that was... He's going to take the stiffness out of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. and then go right, look, like now. a banana peel. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, anyways, how the hell are you guys doing? Good, doing great. We're here yeah. on video and audio feeds. Doing with a vengeance, I am part of this podcast. Is Jacob turned into the most interesting man in the world? Well, yeah, duh. Ah, Besides the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, four o'clock. Well, you know, we haven't started talking about penis stretchers yet, so I think we're doing okay. Penis torches? Yes. What's a penis torch? I said penis stretchers. Let me look it up. What the uh, fuck? Well, while Jacob looks that up, uh, <laughs> we're on audio feeds like Anchor and SoundCloud and Audio Boom. Please rate, subscribe. You know what to do. Subscribe to listen to this audio. It's wonderful. It's great. I think it's the best thing we do ever. <laughs> oh. Jacob just found a beat of thing. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and if you don't subscribe and rate us on various audio platforms, we will call your bosses anonymously and threaten you. What the fuck is that? That's a good question. <laughs> is it like a UK version of a torch? Oh, which means a penis flashlight? <laughs> <laughs> flashlight or flashlight? Uh, both? It could be I, both. Thank God we're out of the minute range of this episode. Thank God. <laughs> I can actually make money off the episode. Well, you know, we're like past the 90 second mark, and that's all the YouTube listens to. I know. Right? Well, that, that's all anybody listens to if they <laughs> listen to us. That's the whole 90 seconds. The one that matter, the ones that matter do. So so that was a much better discussion than we're going to have on episode <laughs> think, season three. I episode think we're going to have a blood sports level discussion <laughs> oh, on this bad motherfucker. That's yeah, true. Tri- tri- you were very vocal about this. By our conversations. <laughs> what on the, the thumbnail? Four o'clock, <laughs> the penis torch episode. <laughs> the one about penis torches. <laughs> four o'clock, the bloodletting. The bloodletting begins. Oh penis torches God. at four o'clock. I the said penis. Word. Wait, just real quick. I said penis stretchers, didn't I? I didn't say yes, penis you torches. Did. You okay, I just wanted to I double check torches. because. Oh God, am I that stupid? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you, you you did say stretcher. Okay, oh, thank God. We can talk about Jacob those is too. just in the market for a penis <laughs> shape <penis> later. <laughs> <laughs> Good penis torch out there. Anybody who's got one available, send me your link to your Etsy store. <laughs> you, you know, we could we could set up a penis stretcher store and call it, uh, you know, Oliver Krangles penis <laughs> stretcher, penis torch stretcher, penis. <laughs> four o'clock <laughs> penis it's not working man let it go let it go we, we could open up a store and call it once upon a penis stretcher <laughs> once upon a penis i guarantee we get everybody coming at least once that's what she said <laughs> that's that's gonna be that's gonna be the uh, tagline over the store everybody comes make in you come once. <laughs> everybody comes in once <laughs> we'll make it come in <laughs> jesus <laughs> Anyway, so so anyways, so we're gonna be talking about season three, episode twenty nine, called Four O'clock. Once again, directed by Lamont Johnson, his second episode in a week or two weeks, written by Rod Serling, uh, based on Four O'clock by Price Day. Okay, nice name. Uh, production code forty eight thirty two. Air date April sixth. Uh, just right off April Fool's Day, nineteen sixty two. Uh, stars Theodore Bickle, Moina McGill. McGill. Is that how you say Moina? Moynihan. I don't know. Uh, Phyllis Love and Lyndon Chills um okay uh real so quick real Raymond. quick before we jump into yes. this just real quick so imdb listed this as 144 and their like listings by by user ratings just as a heads up and pace magazine 112 yes. so, and pace magazine also spoils the ending well i mean it's not really it's not really that uh surprising when it, it comes says, up by so. the way this is ending there you go saved you 25 minutes you're welcome <laughs> that's the review of the episode <laughs> Sounds about yeah, right to me. Written as a Alfred Hitchcock Excuse Presents me. episode. Really? It was, it was meant to be that, and it got put in his book instead. Oh, God, I feel bad for that book. That book, that poor book, had to deal with this nonsense. I mean, the tone, All I think, right. definitely would fit more Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, not to say that it couldn't be Twilight Zone, because, you know, the what what uh, constitutes Indeed. a Twilight Zone episode does does it lend it to that but it also lends it to alfred hitchcock because it's that kind of that kind of thing you know it's more political and such can, can i say something the the picture that i have on imdb for this episode no. looks like this guy's holding a piece of chicken like <laughs> do you guys i don't know if you see no seriously like the way the way it looks is like it looks like he's holding a piece of chicken or something does he but 
I don't know. It's weird. Or he's holding a mask or something like that. It's so weird. I, I'm I just, I'm just saying we, we don't have to like focus on that. I just, no, I no, I just, up, I didn't, I didn't look that because I was looking like up that. the, the trivia for, that uh, Raymond was talking about. It does look like and, chicken leg. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird, but it's not. It's oh, like, it's something he's face. going like this and it's blurred, but it does look like a chicken leg. Let's blow that up. <laughs> he's got the screen. Yeah, it does. What the heck? <laughs> so like, I didn't oh, know what yeah. I, I don't. Oh, that's one of the cards, the information he has, and he's just flicking it around and it blurs. Right. Well, I, mean, I looked at this picture before. I'm like, why is this guy holding a chicken leg, like or a thigh or whatever? It's so I weird. I mean, look at the guy. That kind of tells you all you need to know. Yeah, and his gigantic uh, bottle rim glasses. Like he's like experimenting on stuff. So, anyways, uh, so four o'clock um... in the morning. Morning. He never really specifies 4 p.m. or 4 a.m. Really, he says p.m. Does he? Oh, okay. Tells so you how much yeah, I was paying point, attention. Well, later point, on, he says he spends all morning calling people. So since he's not like prank calling people at four in the morning, like he says he does, we know it's not in the morning. <laughs> point taken. Point taken. There is there point, is method to his madness. Sure. At this point, I got to ask: Does it really matter, Triv? Does it really Probably matter? Not. I'm a sucker Especially, for small details. Well, it it only matters because he looks out the window to see if he could see people or not, and he wouldn't be able to see them if it was four in the morning. Well, he could have night vision. I mean, yeah, He'd true. Be cat, like a cat lady. <laughs> a roller coaster. He, he could be like that Stephen King movie. Son of the, a bitch. Uh, cat's eye, not cat's eye, but was the was the one Sleepwalkers? Oh yeah, Sleepwalkers. Yeah, is Sleepwalkers is a great movie. amazing. I saw that in theaters. You saw everything in theaters. <laughs> I know. I love sleep. Uh, anything that came out in the 80s and 90s, Jacob saw in the theater. I did. That's all I did. I went to the movies <laughs> and smoked out. I mean, that, to be fair, that's kind of all I did in the 90s. Let's go see movies. And smoked out? Uh, no, I've been a little too young for that. <laughs> oh, what are you saying? <laughs> I mean, I'm saying you're old, damn it. No, actually, you're not much older than me. So, oh, man. I just see a lot of movies, though. Anyways, so Raymond, I know you wanted to come on this episode to talk about this lovely, lovely episode. Um, you, you're a guy that likes a lot of like, like the really B grade stuff, the you know the stuff that's really cheesy and over the top and silly, and Damn. you know has it has its charm. But um, like the last episode, <laughs> <laughs> but you came on for the grave, which. Nick. <laughs> I'm, uh, hey, no, he. But but I say that about uh, Triv and uh, Dan though. They like the they like the campy stuff. It's fine. I get it. Do oh, we? Really is it, it okay? <laughs> is it honestly okay, it's Nick? Okay. Because I'm getting it's that you don't think it's okay. Not okay. I'm sorry. Alternative media. Yes. The alternative. <laughs> alternative media. <laughs> Jacob, actually, that would be you, wouldn't it? Alternative media. I, I, I've watched some shit. I've reviewed some shit. <laughs> Um, I reviewed Ouija Shark. I've still got everybody beat. <laughs> I don't know. I've I, I just things, and I I, I can't just even found out about started. Shark Exorcist. Oh God! Oh, I God. reviewed that fucking porn that I can't even remember the name <laughs> of. <laughs> Wasn't it just called porn? No. Well, no. There is a movie I reviewed called Porno. <laughs> that was a good movie, horror movie. No, what the fuck? I don't know. It was based on a comic book. It was a porn, straight up seventies porn. Yeah, it was oh. Fritz the Cat. No, this is straight up like hardcore, like porn, you know. Oh, and it was 70s version too. I, yeah, very much. I can't I have not reviewed any porn. I reviewed Ralph Blansky movies, so that's about as close as I've gotten. <laughs> hey, I've watched Bat Pussy, so I got you all beat. Yeah. I mean, I, I got you all beat. I watched Volcano. Oh, <laughs> fuck that. You have, honey. Come back when you when you Volcano. come to the when right now you're at the kids table. I, I reviewed a movie about the myth of the woman who got impregnated by a swan god. There you so, go. So yeah, Can that's a, that? that's a movie that the magic <laughs> toy shop I think is called. I don't. Oh know. god. <laughs> I just watched a video. Hey, I just movie. watched a video. I just watched a video of a seagull eating a, a squirrel. So that's not Dude, a movie, hon. <laughs> I had to go to a website to watch this that I probably got 32 viruses from while watching. <laughs> well, that's your own deal, man. Or is that 32 STDs just by watching it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Definitely. And I did do Fritz the Cat and the Nine Lives of Fritz the Cat. But I mean, you know. So, anyways, Raymond, 
you, you the last episode you came on was for the grave which is actually a pretty competent pretty good episode you know when you asked me like I, I was asking like do you want to wait till season four you're like no we need to talk about four o'clock and why why would you do this to yourself <laughs> I, wow. I mean, I want I to wow. make sure that it gets a bad placement so we don't have another Jacob dream situation here. And, uh, and so I'm the next feeling, time I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling attacked here. I'm feeling blamed for this. <laughs> Regarded, it was me that did it, but uh-huh. Nick also uh-huh. gave into that. Uh-huh. I, I, well, to be fair, I did ask you to, to come on. Yes, this you episode did. needs a hater. And I want to make sure. Oh, you, you got plenty of haters. Just in case. For me. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> um, well, I do enjoy playing devil's advocate. So, uh, you know. I mean, this episode, I, I don't know how you guys feel. I think this episode is probably the worst thing I've ever seen. And that, like, on the Twilight Zone, the worst Worse than, than Trouble Volcano? Well, no. I mean, I walked out of that movie, so I don't think anything could be that bad. <laughs> Tommy Jones the worst, movie? Yeah, I consider it the worst movie of all time. Oof. What? Come on. Come on. I do, man. I walked it out of that movie. Not it was it, that bad. It ain't great for sure, but you did not I'd rather the heroics of the train operator who jumped into, jumps the, into lava the lava for no reason. <laughs> that's what they should that's what he should have been holding a copy of Halloween Kills in the process. Oh my god. <laughs> How about the Exorcist Believer? I'd rather watch Exorcist Believer again. At least it'd give me a good nap. Damn. Well, no, I don't not that bad. I watched that, that on so direct bad. TV back in the day. Uh, I, I watched that. I in feel theater. weird you didn't you see that much. in theaters. Yeah. Was- yeah. So four o'clock is a an episode with a probably one of the most unlikable people in the Twilight Zone. Would you guys agree with that? Oh, I would agree. I, it got me thinking though. Okay, is that this guy worse or the dude from the Escape Clause? No, this guy's worse. This guy's way worse. The Escape Clause guy is pretty bad, but this guy is just like there's no redeeming values about him. He's he's literally like as you said, Triv, when I was talking to you earlier, he's the guy in the basement on the computer trolling people because he has no common um no no uh good he's bone in life. his body. He's right. an incel. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he is. I, I did look up a review of this just to make sure I wasn't crazy and hating it. And the person in the review literally compares him to Hitler wanting to target people and stuff. Like, he even has a little bit of a German accent. <laughs> he does. Yeah. Right. And uh, in the wiki uh, thing, it says they did a radio play of this. So I skimmed through the radio play and he literally says, oh, my plan is better than just putting badges on them. So oh they, my God. When they did this in 2000, they did a radio play in the UK mm-hmm. and they literally turned him into a Nazi in that. Oh my God. Oh, See, now I, <laughs> oh, I would... I would honestly, and I, I get the Hitler comparison. I would say he, he's more petty than Hitler. Like to put that that level. Yeah, of I would say so. I think everybody's him, more petty but, than Hitler. But you know what I mean. Like that's the hell of an that's, insult. You're more petty than Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. It's it's attaching too much significance to it. Makes him sound like he's important. Like if yeah. you want to, get... he's he's a, he's he's your basic bitch. Like like basement dwelling little asshole, you know that that's all he is. Take down mm-hmm. culture. It's not like cancel culture where people actually did something wrong, right? It's some sixteen year old posted a racist joke on Twitter, and then twenty years later you find it and try to have him fired for it. Oh yeah, but, but like, problem... that's what this guy literally is doing. He's a troll. The problem, yep. yeah. The problem with this episode is it's 25 minutes of this and like it doesn't need to be it could be a five minute sketch. But yeah, the only thing that make this guy man. worse would be if he like I don't know threw on some cat makeup and got on a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. So he but, looks um, like Liz Taylor when he's got makeup on? He may. I, I mean know. those glasses, yeah. With a chicken bone. <laughs> <laughs> and forgive yeah, the one I mean, real quick as- this is stupid and i apologize but one real quick aside raymond do you have you ever watched um oh god it's it's an mst3k episode the incredibly strange teenagers who died and became mixed up zombies i have that dvd in storage right now my brother bought it for me for christmas i haven't watched it yet but i do have the uh director's like four pack okay thing. If you yeah. get the chance, the the 
kind of main like psychic fortune teller chick in that she looks a ton like um the chick from perchance to dream in the dream oh that's kind of crazy that's really random but i've been talking about old movies again yeah Yeah, i I gotta i gotta clean out my storage unit this week anyways i did it to clean jacob you remember that time in starfield when They travel. They're doing space. the thing with the thing, Raymond. <laughs> God yeah. damn you guys. Okay. Anyway, we're working on an N64 controller. Rebuilding <laughs> okay. The so oh, Nick, <laughs> save us and tell us anything about this episode, please. So this episode, once again, has the worst person in the world. Not the most interesting, but the worst person in the world. He's a guy that calls everyone, does the whole thing. You need to get him out of whatever position they're in, whether they're a teacher or. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so I know we all drink at some point in our lives, or we're drinking right now. I think it's funny that he's calling the teachers' union of whatever. I what the co- first question I have is, how the hell does he know everything? Because it's never explained. But he he calls the teachers' union of some district and says, "You need to get rid of this teacher because he's a drunk." Which I'm pretty sure in 2023, every teacher's drunk because they have to be because they are so fucked over by the societal norms of. You can't teach anything to kids these days, but I don't know. Where does this guy get his information at? Is he like a fucking, you know, does he have an internet that we don't know about? Like, what the hell's going on? We know he receives dozens and dozens of letters a day. Well, he mails so he, dozens and but dozens of like letters Shadow, a day. He's got like a he network receives of email. Yeah, he has a network of people that just spy for him, I guess. I don't send me the information in the beginning we don't know he's that terrible because he's like oh this person's trying to take down the government this person has inappropriate relationship with his students so if that stuff's true then he is doing good but we find out no he's just nuts he's a Leo. It's the beginning of cancer. I hate culture. to say it, but every teacher is a drunk. Like, or not every teacher, but most teachers drink. Like, I don't understand. I, I don't understand this episode. You're talking about the 60s. You're talking everybody about a time when. Dude, yeah, everybody drank in the 60s. Like, literally, yeah, everyone. But the, okay, We'd you all know be how, like drunk you know, in the you 60s. You know how it is right now where, like, oh, well, I can go and drink and I can go and do this and that. But the people teaching my kid, oh, they better be on their game. My school I mean, had a teacher get fired for being drunk. So they, well, how they there was them... a chick just fired for doing a, a private OnlyFans? I mean, I'm not saying the two are the synonymous, but I thought you were going to say they had a teacher fired for doing a student, which has happened about <laughs> three times this month already, too. Oh but... no, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had I had that friends every that day are teachers. I, I had I have friends that are teachers that like they go out of town specifically if they want to go have that a drink, much less many. Because I, know a teacher that I mean. A <laughs> I really. Do. I mean, they probably have. They probably like take corn from the cornfield and distill their own liquor. You know. Yeah. Well, because p- t- there are parents that will, you know, you could fart in the wrong direction and they'll they'll get up in arms. I mean that that has happened. I farted the wrong direction and they're like, "Oh boy, oh boy." Well, you were a teacher I think, back dude, I think we. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've had like eighty-five jobs. Nice. One of them was a teacher, and I farted one per in a year they, of life. Yeah, one per year. <laughs> When every other year, yeah, it was actually sixty-five jobs. I know someone who actually claimed they had like a hundred thousand jobs or whatever it was. Not really that many, but they had a lot of jobs. I'm like, but you're only twenty-eight years old. Well, <laughs> I don't want to tell you. You suck I've as had, an employee. <laughs> you're not bad at all of them, then, right? Like, I mean, to be fair, I've had probably fifteen jobs in my life, and most of them were like retail jobs that I've either quit. So that that's a little bit different. But when somebody says like they were a fireman and they were a policeman and they were a uh, baseball coach and they were, you know, uh, I don't know, a prostitute. It's just like, uh, maybe you should hold back on these claims. And that was just me yesterday, you know, <laughs> um, but no, but seriously, like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what to say about this episode because it, it's about a, like a extremely horrible human being who gets his comeuppance and you know raymond i i kind of get why you don't like this episode and i'm kind of right on board I, I never i didn't go in this episode going i'm gonna automatically hate this episode because i can't because you know uh your your opinions on or what your opinions are of you know you could like something that i don't like but man i gotta say you know you were pretty spot on when you were telling me about this episode it's 
it's it's one of those episodes where you can start to see the seams of Rod Sterling starting to not really be he's he's getting a little despondent with his with his writing. And I think we've seen that throughout this entire the season. We'll and we'll see it in season five. A lot lately. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well it just it, I mean I guess was this episode definitely didn't remind me of Treehouse of Horror, Jacob. So you should have yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a while back I did send Nick a list of just based on pace ranking, how many are in the top 50, bottom 50 from each season. Mm-hmm. And you can just see the numbers just go down. Just, oh, in season one, there were like 20 good ones. And then season two, there were 15 good ones. And in season three, there were 10 good ones. And you just see it just go down and down and down. Yeah, and Jacob, you mentioned that too last week about how like this season just feels like when we talked about was it the little people, how mm-hmm. that seemed like a f- breath of fresh air compared to like what we've been getting, and seemed like a season one know. episode. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. wasn't like the best episode ever, but it, it it was fun and it was very Twilight Zone, and it just seemed like a season one episode. Season one was the freshest episode of all. I mean, yes, it was season one, but even now looking back, those episodes all had like it seemed like they enjoyed what they were doing. Now two it seems the, like they have to. Two of the episodes you guys have high ranked in this in your whole list, The Grave and Nothing in the Dark, are both season two episodes that just happened to air in season three. They held them back yeah. and aired them later. So even when you look through and say, Oh, we've had a couple of good episodes in season three, the two of them are season two episodes. Yeah, because season yeah, two is short, comparably speaking. Yeah, it was only like 29 episodes, I think it was. As compared to what, 36, 37? 37 or something. Yeah, like yeah this, this season's 37. Okay. And I, I just kind of wonder if like the the CBS um, people, the execs and stuff like that, were starting to really get on right. Because I, I don't know, Raymond, if you ever, I, I've mentioned this before, but I don't know if you ever go watch his like, old interviews after the Twilight Zone ended and when he was getting to Night Gallery. But he is really despondent about like the state of America, the state of the world, state of you know tv uh viewing he he wanted like I, i've mentioned this as well he went on a tirade about the fugitive about how it just it's pretty much crap tv is what he boiled it down to where there's no there's no real sense of like the irony of human existence and like the irony or you know the kind of the nature of how humans tick and stuff like that and he was really despondent about how tv is just not what it used to be you could look at that now with a lot of tv where it's a lot of you know big budget you know last of us or game of thrones and you know this is an episode that i feel really represents probably how he was starting to feel at the time because you know it's 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 a really lackluster really lazily written episode and i'm not trying to take away from i know triv you mentioned that you actually enjoyed this episode. there's parts there's it's one of those things where there's there's things about it that i can look at and say they're applicable today as much as any time, but as far as the episode goes, yeah, it's pretty like like you said before, and that's been a lot of the case with a lot of these episodes. There are stories that could be told in a like a five minutes kind of tells you everything you need about that particular story. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, they they put it out to twenty five minutes, but there's not enough substance to it to make it a twenty five minute episode. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it's it's rough. I mean, the whole episode is about him talking about something's gonna happen at four o'clock. Parrot's gonna like, parrot responds back, yeah, four o'clock. And well, you, you know, know what's funny? This weeks. is this is really yeah. random, but it's a thing I picked up on, and it kind of sums up the thing. The bird, um, like so when um, Kriggle says, "My charge and my obligation is to destroy evil," the bird actually shits. <laughs> and, and i don't know if that was or something fell from behind the bird so i'm guessing it was it was a shit but i can't say that for sure it might have just been something out of his out of his bowl or something i, I like how he has the i like he has the parrot just outside a cage and there's a paper on the little thing right there so and he's not even, do see, not even caged up we do see that in the uh intro from the last episode rod is just standing next to this bird introducing what's yeah. gonna happen next week it's like oh by the way guys have you seen the giant fucking parrot like <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be in episode two tune in next week and yeah, smoke he's, Chesterfield. He's, <laughs> yeah and he's also like that's how he ends the episode two is next to the bird yeah well no he ends uh, the episode with like he's like two feet tall or whatever i, I don't understand what's going on 
But Jacob, I'm going to let you read this opening narration with one of the probably hardest words you're ever going to pronounce. Oh, I'm ready. I was going to message Jacob and tell him to pre-read this, but I want him to solve for Okay. I haven't read through it yet. <clears throat> <laughs> I did Let's look the word up as well, so I can tell you what it Me means. Too. That's Oliver Krangle, a dealer in petulance and poison. He's rather arbitrarily chosen four o'clock as his personal Goddardamaran. And we're about to watch this metamorphosis <laughs> of a twisted fanatic poisoned by the gangrene of prejudice to the status of an avenging angel, upright and omniscient, dedicated and fearsome. Whatever your clock says, it's four o'clock, and wherever you are, it happens to be the Twilight Zone. It's four o'clock yeah, somewhere. I struggled with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did better than I thought you were going to do. So that, that uh, Gatter de Morang, is, is that how you say it? Demar- Gatter de Morang. Yeah, it's Gatter de Morang is Iran. Gatter de Morang. Uh, yeah, de Morang. It's so uh, Ragnarok, essentially. It's a German version or German translation of, yeah. of Ragnarok. It's like an uh, end of the world kind I, of. Uh, yeah. I don't know all the details, but I know of, that. of of the Nordic of like uh, that's that's their apocalypse, basically. Their their yeah, Rod certainly is a uh, very um uh, very wordy he, when he comes up with like some opera or something. God Ragnarok. Ragnarok, not Ragnarok. Oh, God or uh, yeah, is the Maybe? last and richer Wagner cycle of a four musical four music drama titled The Ring des Nebelunga. Nebul- yeah, the Ring of Nebelung. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's like it's, uh, uh, not just the end of the world, but like the end and rebirth. It's going to yeah restart in the way that our psychopath wants it to. Yeah, Let him get him a ring, get him a ring out the window for all I can. The Wikipedia <laughs> suggests that Pete the parrot is calling him a nut. Oh yeah, not absolutely. Asking for a nut. Oh, that I got like that throughout. That I didn't think he was actually asking for a nut. You go on one more fun thing about, and this is stupid, but since this episode deals with conspiracy and all that shit, so you know how they did the national, like, they, they sent out an alert to all the phones today? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was going to congratulate all of you on that, Oh my god, so. yes. Thank you for, so there was this conspiracy out there that this message going across 5G was going to activate anyone that had gotten the COVID vaccine Basically oh, yeah, I heard turning about that. them into zombies. I was looking forward to seeing all the zombies running around. <laughs> I was going to congratulate you all on not turning into zombies, but I didn't want to ruin it. I mean, we had a guy try to like eat a person down here, so I mean, there's zombies are that's definitely yeah, that, that's, that's like a that's Bassel. like a typical Thursday down in Florida though. Not not Florida, just Miami. True. Just Miami. I'm 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 I, I wouldn't have turned into a zombie. Did you say Miami? Anybody Go who Bill! Wanted, anybody who wanted to get it, good, good for them. But I'm a Giants fan, so. Yeah. Oh, man. No, but, um, all right. So, Crank- <laughs> so Krangle is, uh, you know, the opposite of Chris Kringle. He actually may, they might be Chris Kringle for all I know, because he is judging people. Uh, he calls, calls people saying, you've been a naughty boy, or you've been, you know, a naughty girl, and I, I don't seems, know. I mean, he, yeah, he go seems ahead. to have been really heavily like, you know, since like the whole McCarthyism era was like 40s and 50s. He seems like he's like, like still in the middle of that. Like he's calling people left and right, like, oh, communist harlot, you know, all of these things. And I, I mean, I, his I, coke is his coke bottle glasses kind of represent that, I guess. The IMDb trivia for this says that the actor was a avid advocate against McCarthyism and that's kind of why I wanted to do this episode to make this character look bad because it's everything he didn't believe yeah I, 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 I could back see in that, that good job holy shit yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean wanna... like he poured himself into this one yes the the only thing that I, I can gleam out of this episode is just like his neighbors don't like him nobody likes him he sits in a, a room with a parrot who I thought the parrot was going to eat him at the end. Actually, that would have made this episode way better. The parrot ate him. Thought it was in the radio it. play. The radio does. Yeah. Really? Oh, oh really? my god. That's what I read. I, I've just read that. I feel like he would have had <laughs> to have gone down to like six inches tall to really like like properly eat him. 
It says in the radio uh, adaptation starring Stan Freeberg, the ending was altered to be more gruesome as Pete the Parrot mistakes the now shrunken Kringle. (laughs) And uh, you can listen to the end of it. It's on YouTube and you hear the crunching noises and everything. Nice. Oh, cool. See, that's better. Like, that would have made this episode way better because, you know, it it just like, uh, it, it feels like a horror episode in a lot of respects just the nature of like the horrifying idea of like this guy just ruining people's lives and you see that with the woman who comes up and she is the the wife of a doctor who honestly i i don't know how you guys feel about that that point of the doctor like he he didn't get to the like the woman quick enough so therefore he is you know guilty of like being a terrible neglectful doctor but she's like well, he was really fucking busy. Like, what do you want out of him? He tried to help people. You I mean, you got to be in a hospital to understand, like, how crazy it can get. And it's stuff like that. It's like, you know, what the guy who was, you know, none of this is really explained uh, outside what the woman says. Like, the guy, the teacher who is drunk, or like I said, it's not explained how he has these letters, where he's getting them from. It, it just, it, it feels like a, like a half empty episode of just nonsense. And it just, like, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, but it, the yeah. wife says that his co-workers are dumb to ignore everything and it's tearing them apart, which means all of his co-workers don't blame him. We hear from the wife that they tell him just ignore the letters. So there was whatever investigation into this. He wasn't found at fault. No one thinks he did anything wrong except for this guy. Uh, it's It's a weird it's like it's like that guy that gets angry on behalf of everybody else, but everybody else is fine with it. Whatever happened, or like, like that it's... guy who mutes his microphone and forgets to unmute it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a dick! I tell you, <laughs> and he's the guy that's still muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! Oh. Now he's eating his microphone and, and giving us sexy blowing eyes, blowing his microphone. <laughs> Oh my god! How much would I, I, I? You know, you I just do that, came I back do that because I cough. Well, no, I do it because I cough a lot, so I, I feel bad. I want you guys to have to hear me cough, and then I forget that I even have it turned off. So I, I probably said, "Hey, Jacob," and nobody heard me say. It. Yeah, so I I went on my long spiel, and then there was silence for like ten seconds because you were talking, and we all knew you were talking, but your mic didn't know. So. Yeah. Which would be funny because, like, my mic will pick up on the the Zoom recording, but none of you guys will have heard what I said. But no, <laughs> like, what, what what I was saying with, like, you know, it's just it's really depressing that there's just people out there that are, are, are willing to ruin people's lives because they're just angry little fucking, I don't know, trolls. And, you know, I, I appreciate that. But it's just like, yeah, Twitter, exactly. And that's what this problem with this episode, though, is. It's just like... It's nothing but that. There's no substance to it. There's no, you know, nothing you know happens. It it, it's fury porn. It really is. It's that it's that it's that making a person so unlikable that it gives you something yeah. a strong like not a straw man to be mad at, but just like like that that kind of a culmination of all those really shitty people in one place. Like you go to watch this when you need to just be angry at everything. But that's I the problem. No, I go, agree. Go ahead, Raven. Go no, go ahead, Nick. Go oh ahead. no, but I'm saying that's the problem, though. It's like if this episode had a little more nuance to it than straight up just beating you over the head, because that that's what the Twilight Zone does sometimes, where it's just like it, it takes a hammer and just smacks you like a hundred thousand times over the head with some of its messaging, and it, it's it's got to be more subtle than just a angry guy who's angry at the world telling people that they're terrible individuals and getting his comeuppance. It just that that's not good storytelling in my aspect in my feel so i don't know i would say too that the one thing sorry raymond go ahead i was gonna say i told nick in uh, a message that part of the problem of these bad guy gets what's coming to him episodes is that now you just get 20 minutes of this guy being a bad guy in two minutes of him getting a comeuppance but that just means now i got 20 minutes of being mad not enjoying anything they just want you to be mad for 20 minutes well and i think the mortality or the more mortality the more morality at play here like that's kind of the way that some of that shit did back in the 60s but i think that we hold twilight zone to a higher standard would you agree 
Yeah, I think so. And I think that's what yeah. Ross Tony talks about later on on his uh, YouTube or not YouTube, but his videos that are posted on YouTube is just he agrees like their their TV is not you know willing to go far enough when it comes to human morality and stuff like that. And it just you could tell that he's either suffering from just bo- uh, burnout or he just doesn't care anymore. It just I don't know. Oh, dude. Kind of a, did any of you guys look at the trivia of what magazines he's reading while talking to the wife? I saw the one. It was like, a, wasn't it some kind of a gun? Um... Yes, it's the anti-aircraft cannon. And later, he talks to the FBI guy and says, oh, my original plan was to stop air travel. This guy planned on shooting planes <laughs> out of there. <laughs> that was his original plan. He was going that been to more become fun. a terrorist and start blasting commuter planes out of the air. That was his original plan. How did he go from that to thinking he could will people to be two feet tall? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, He planned on being active and like taking control of anti-aircraft cannons. And then suddenly... And then, like you said, he turns into, oh, I'll mind control shrinking people. How does that leap made? But it goes to show you, too, that he actually had the power to do it. Like, yes. what the hell? <laughs> he does Phil. does yeah. it happen to everybody? Does does it work? Worked on him. Yeah. It worked on him, but he <laughs> says murderers and stuff. Does it work on murderers? If they haven't repented. I guess. <laughs> Okay, we haven't even gotten to that part yet. Well, we, we have because this wife they says, haven't accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. This, yeah. this wife is yelling at me. He says, "Look at them; they're running around like germs and bacteria." He's like, "That it? I'll make them small, three feet, <laughs> no, two feet, exactly two feet." But then he later then says I'm... a third of their size. So he, I don't know. Even he doesn't know his plan. <laughs> but yet it somehow works and then i'm gonna angrily thing. mark out the gaysburg address it's like oh my god the same thing about this episode he, um, which nobody's is that it premiered it, by the way i just want to throw that out there but the saddest thing about this episode is that there's just not shit to talk about you can talk about that's, the ending yeah. that's really about it nothing else really happens it's just some dude making trolling phone calls for the first like third of it and then the second is him talking to some guy's wife whose life he tried to ruin and the FBI. And a bird that shits when he says my yeah. obligation is to destroy I mean, evil. There's just nothing yeah. really to the point to where we're like picking out, which I mean it was funny and it's really intuitive, but picking out like what he's reading in the background and the bird shitting and stuff like that. I mean, it's like this episode, quote, quite honestly, I ain't gonna lie, I did not think this was the worst episode we've watched. But it wasn't the best either. It was just kind of like <laughs> my biggest issue with this episode was that it was just like nothing happens, it's just kind of boring. I did write I mean, down his long rant of how he's going to defeat evil. <laughs> he's going to expose evil, strip it bare, push it out into the light, dissect it, pinpoint it, eliminate it, exercise it. Here's your sexicon. Denude it and destroy <laughs> it. There we go. Denude he's going to exercise demons. Satan. I mean... Does D nude sexicon or anti sexicon? How does that work? I'd say uh, that it's. I, I'd say that it's. I don't know, actually. What does it come I up mean... as on the? <laughs> there you go. There's your answer. Judge Judy has spoken. I mean, this episode did. Uh, it, it made me fall asleep. So. Oh shit! Really? Damn. No, not really. It should have. I mean, I, I was know. doing something else while I was watching it. Admittedly. I was working on something. I was watching it, but I mean, I wasn't really. I mean, that you don't even old. have to. You don't even have to pay attention to it to understand what's going on. You could literally be, you know, having three, uh, three things going at once, and you still understand that this episode nothing sucks. Is going on, and Triv hit it on, the nail on the head. And I know we've said this before about episodes. We've said it before about episodes. How man, this episode needed to be ten minutes longer. This one needed to be eighteen minutes shorter. I mean, thrown in the fire of vanities. Yeah, there's nothing to this episode except for the ending. But the, then how the would we cliff. know that he called the FBI and the CIA and he's afraid to call the White House because there's too many communists in the White House that he's worried <laughs> about being caught by the communists in 1962? Honestly, the story itself, the idea is not <laughs> terrible. 
but the execution is just like there's nothing here nothing happened they just stretched out this idea you spend 20 minutes trying to show 22 minutes trying to hell 23 minutes trying to show this guy being a (laughs) dick and honestly i wasn't even invested in it enough to really i was like okay he's making phone calls what the fuck ever He's just an incel. That's what I kept thinking of. He's a fucking incel. Yeah. And then we see that for 23 and a half minutes. And then the last 30 <laughs> seconds, we see like, you know, little. It, it literally, this is no joke. I, I always I keep track of when the act break happens. It's 14 minutes in before the act break happens. And those 14 minutes are him bitching about everyone else, how everyone else is evil, how everyone else is a communist, how he should blow up planes or whatever he's talking about. You know the husband and the the Mrs. Williams, the the attendant, and it just it, it's just like almost like you're going, you know, maybe this guy needs to get laid or something. Like what is go- <laughs> like I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Like he needs something. Like it feels, you know, what this feels like. It feels like an episode that should have an ending where he brings a gun, he goes to like the bell tower or something like that, and shoots a bunch of people, and they get shot, <laughs> and then they find like records. And I'm just saying, like something. Other than him being turned into a fucking two foot dick, they, no, the ending was. I thought the ending was fine. It was whatever, but all that time spent before and Raymond Gray brought up a great point. How the fuck? I think Triv did too. How the fuck did he just suddenly decide? Oh, I'm just gonna will it. I mean, who comes to that <laughs> conclusion? Could we? I mean, has he done this before? Could we? Well, have I seen think that we should have seen the journey. I mean, you could have showed us him being a dick for five minutes and then given us a few minutes of him like coming to the con- how he came to the conclusion that he can just will things into existence. I think it's have an ego thing. Mentally Honestly, feed, have him mentally feed that fucking parrot the nut. Like right. the, the parrot calls him a nut and he just wills the nut into the parrot's mouth or lifts it up or whatever. Oh. Like show that he has some power not to just. Even well, if it's way to where we're like, eh, I don't know if that's really what's going on. But at least what made him think he could do it? Besides, I just think it was ego. Narcissist. It was it was literally the power of his ego that he thought that he was like he thought that he was so damn good and pure and that he could. I mean, look at the people that think they're Jesus Christ. You know, no, I'm with you. That's fine. Show that. Show he's like some religious nut that he's like. They couldn't have done that Jesus back shrine. in the 60s, though, you know? Or something. I mean, it shows something. Even if, even if we're like, because I think that would be better if we, the viewer, were kind of like, dude, you, you're off your fucking rocker. There's no way you're going to will this shit. But at least give us something to why yeah. he thinks he can, he has like Jedi powers all of a sudden. Yeah, it I gives agree. us none of that. It gives, it gives us none of that. It gives us none of, you know, his reasoning. Like, you know, the one thing I, I uh, like about, you know, recent Doctor Who with uh, Peter Capaldi and stuff like that is they'll do like two parter episodes and it'll be like you get all this great kind of build up and then you get the great payoff. And here it's just like you're getting you're getting the payoff, but you're not getting any of the build up. You're not getting any why he does this, how he does this. You know, it feels like there's not enough time, which, you know, we talked about that before. But then I worry, like, if he gave him another 20 minutes, like, what the hell would they do with that? Would just be him bitching for 20 minutes. It's just like, what was the purpose? The wife coming? I mean, I don't really think it needed to be there. I mean, I I wasn't as offended by that. But the the whole purpose of the FBI guy, it was the same purpose as the wife. I mean, nobody believes you. What that gave the story nothing like the wife didn't give much to it, but at least it gave a face the wife at least doing. shows like he has this system. He has all them cabinets. Yeah. He has a filing and a he, then the FBI guy shows up and we find out, like you said multiple times, Jacob, he's just a troll. We find out, like, oh, well, how are you exposing people? Like, well, actually, I just call him at three in the morning and wake him up like a day. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> like that that's his big plan up until this. Up until this point, he goes from I'm going to prank call people to I have the mental capability (laughs) to shrink every bad person in the world. Why wouldn't he just kill them? Down to two feet because (laughs) then they're not punished. They have to be exposed and denuded or whatever it it it, says. It's like... It's like if you took the guy from this is gonna sound funny, but it's like if you took the guy from uh the jerk, the one who's trying to kill Steve Martin, 
And his plan was to do what they do in inner space where they try to, they end up shrinking the two main bad guys. It's like that thing where you have this guy that just picks a name out of the phone book and then he somehow gets a, a weapon that turn people as small. It's just like, uh, that would have been a better story than what we got here, where it's just an angry white, you know, incel troll who just like fucking wants to be angry at the world. And it's just, I, I don't know. He wants to try to punish. Why he tells the FBI guy, oh, this way you'll be able to catch them. Just look for the little people and they're the evil one. Anyone that's it's exactly like, two foot tall or a third of their size, he changes back and forth. <laughs> Everybody that's exactly two feet tall, they obviously did something wrong. So round them up, kind of like Hitler wanted to do, <laughs> and uh, throw them in jail because they're obviously evil because my suddenly magic powers said so. Yeah. I do think the like reason oh, go ahead. Sorry, Dick. would come out like really on the, 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 the shit end of the stick here. Yeah, I, I when babies, I almost said that, short. yeah, I said uh, little people instead of midgets. <laughs> I, I was halfway through I'm my not rant. Correct. I, uh, I you've been, you're canceled, Raymond. Rant. You're canceled. I'm going to call rant. your house at two o'clock in the morning. Turn them all into <laughs> little people. I think we had this conversation <laughs> before on this podcast. Can I call them midgets? I don't know. Is that a real, is, is that like a technical term? I don't know. I don't know. One of the greatest lines about it is from the TV show Bones. They find a midget wrestler that was killed. And the guy's like, I know what happened. He was a midget wrestler. And Bones is like, sir, you are a doctor. You should not be using that type of language. She's like, I understand. But I also assure you, midget wrestling is America's greatest pastime. <laughs> <laughs> I do think I do think the reason that they and this is I'm not I'm not saying I like it. I'm just saying I think that the the rationale behind kind of ramping up, you go from the the person that owns the apartment to the the wife to the FBI agent is to show the fact that it's he's not just fucking with his landlord. He's not just fucking with local people. He's fucking with the government and like making false calls and things like that. I'm not saying it's right, but I think that's probably the reason they went that route. Well, couldn't it, they just said he could have been like, I called the FBI and they I gave agree. me a hard time or whatever. Or the no, wife I, I get because it kind of put a face to the people that, because yeah. like you guys brought up a minute ago in the beginning when he's calling these people, you have no idea. We're like, maybe these people are shit bags, but yeah, you, you get a representative of one of them. Yeah. I said early, like he says like this teacher has inappropriate relationships with the kids and they're showing up to school drunk. And this guy's uh, a subversive trying to take down the government. And we're like, Oh, maybe he has a point. And then we quickly find out, no, he's just a no job. Yeah. Cause I kind of get the feeling in the beginning when he's making those calls, the way they presented him, even though, yeah, he's saying these terrible things. You, I got the feeling right off the bat. Yeah. This guy's, He's he's not all there, or he's just a fucking troll. He's like being an asshole, just calling on all these people. Because like when he calls and they're like, "Well, who are you?" and they whoever's on the other line, they're like, "Well, what proof do you have?" He's like, "Because I said so." He's like, "Who am I? It doesn't matter. I'm a concerned citizen. I said so. If I said so, it is." It's like eh. we find out he made eleven phone calls that morning already. Oof. He well, said, phone calls yeah, I mean, morning. <laughs> when he you says, call oh, the FBI, a morning, <laughs> right? <laughs> When you're calling the FBI, like there, the, I'm assuming when he goes, all these people are evil. All right, I guess I gotta put an order for a phone tap. Uh, you know, this guy Krangle is, uh, you know, apparently trying to be the anti Santa Claus and ruin everybody's life. And it just like none of that happens. It, yeah, it's just like the FBI comes in. Yeah, we don't do any of that. And just walks out. Yeah. Like it, this guy's obviously fucking crazy and out of his fucking mind, and yet they're not going to do anything about well, it. Well, he's so insular, and I job. know I know we've called him in, an incel, but too like he's so in his own world of like you know smelling his own farts that I'm really on farts tonight. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but he's so in his own own head about how amazing he is and how and you know the ego and yeah but those stuff. are the people those are the people that end up being the ones that you find on the news the incel insular people right. that you know i'm just saying like none of the stuff the fbi does in this th it makes any sense whatsoever it's like this guy is obviously fucking crazy and maybe it's maybe it's a commentary on like you know how you know the police or the fbi seem to not take this stuff seriously but it's just like 
God damn, this guy's talking about like turning people two feet, which I know is the Twilight Zone, and that doesn't make any sense. But it's like maybe you should call up uh, the institute that uh, Jack uh, Jack Nicholson's in right now. You know, for you know, with the the tall Indian guy and oh, one uh, Chucky, business. yeah, Chucky and Danny DeVito and Brad Dorf, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know Christopher See, Lloyd that- and. How, how do you think it would go? So, you know, like, um, was it Qu- Quality of Mercy, right? Where the guy switches shoes? Or where the guy switches, um, like, experiences? That's Dead Man's shoes. Dead man's so- shoes. No, no, no. But the, the guy yeah, that... Quality of Mercy. Right, shoes shoes Japanese, wasn't the right... Yeah. Right, exactly. But, you know, where he episode. finds himself... He switches nationalities. Right, right. But he, sw- he finds himself he on the other end of things. He identifies with um, a man with shoes. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm yes. talking about a quality of mercy, you assholes. But do you think if he like oh did the purple the whole testament? Thing before, yeah, I know that one. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> the purple penis stretcher. Just, yes, the purple penis stretcher. <laughs> a quality it penis stretcher. It was fantastical. <laughs> but would you, would it have been different if you would have seen him like he does the thing and then he finds himself on the other side of that to see the yeah it would have been interesting. Yes, that would have been much more interesting. I mean, you know, they've done it a billion times before, but that would have been much more interesting than a guy just staring out the window and bitching to the FBI and two other people about how awful they are. It's like, I could just do that right now in real life and you guys would, you know, leave the podcast. It's just like, that's not interesting. Anyways, but that, that that's, that's my whole point. It's just like, you know, like when, how, what is more of a put off or a turn off is in somebody going on YouTube and just bitching for 10 straight minutes about how the DC or Marvel Cinematic Universe is, you know, not what it used to be. It's like, you know, I don't really care anymore. It's like, I'd rather just keep that shit to myself, but it's not really interesting or somebody <laughs> like, you know, I, I don't know. It just, it feels like there could have been something more to what, than what we got. It feels like they didn't have enough budget or enough time or just nothing. I mean, it's, once again, 39 episodes in a season you're going to have those stinkers unfortunately but it's just i don't know in an hour better, or so possibly. we came up with like 10 different things that could have been at least a little interesting in none yeah. of them are in this episode True. we came up with so many things that just little changes that would have at least done something at least been a plot but instead this guy complains And then someone says, hey, why are you complaining? He says, because that's what I do. And then someone else comes in, why are you complaining? Because that's what I do. And then the FBI comes in and says, hey, we heard you have a complaint and have real information. Like, nah, I just prank call people. And it's like, why am I here then? (laughs) Like, also, that's because that's what I do. Like, we just have, (laughs) like Jacob said, we have the same conversation three times. Yeah. A waste of time. The parrot is more interesting than he is. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, do an episode about the parrot. The parrot would have been much more fascinating. I will say parrot... I did enjoy the, the the constant nut. Yeah, I was about to say the parrot's more aware than him. The oh, yeah. parrot knows he's crazy, and he doesn't. It takes the humans longer to figure out he's crazy than it takes a freaking parrot. And the parrot the... lives with him, I mean. <laughs> yeah, the parrot had to, live, had to sit there through 11 phone calls just that morning. So... <laughs> Well, and Jacob, here's an interesting question for you, because I know that you like the episodes that are like single room and kind of like in like they said in one place. How like did that affect if they would have gone somewhere other than that, uh, that room? Would that have made a difference? Do you think uh, if that depends makes on sense? what they did when they went somewhere else? Because while I do like those episodes that are single location and just stories that are single location, I like when they do something because in this one. Can do shit. They don't do anything. <laughs> they don't do jack shit. I, I, yeah, you're right. If he just goes to the post office to complain that yeah. he didn't get his spy letters, then like, <laughs> oh, I was expecting a letter from Peterson in Pennsylvania, and I didn't get it. You guys must be communists too. Like, if it's just the same thing again, then he could have done that from his room. Well, we should do an adventure of him and the character that Bill Murray plays in Scrooge. Oh God! <laughs> Do a, a car travel, you know, road trip movie. Like they could be I with Nan Adams. Yeah, put Nan Adams. Where's Nan Adams been for a while? She hasn't been here. Jacob, can you explain where Nan Adams has been? Uh, she got tired of all the lackluster scripts that were coming her way. So <laughs> I said, "I'm not. It's not worth my time drifting into this episode." <laughs> we're in an apartment we were on another planet for a couple episodes 
Her car can't fly to other planets. Come on. <laughs> Maybe I mean, she she's part of the space. little people. Yes. Yeah. She knocked yeah. that one rocket down to <laughs> Mars where the guy got put into like a a, a zoo. Uh, yeah. Just like us or uh, oh, like yeah, all over. People, like yeah, all over. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's not really much else to talk about in this episode. It's like, like I said, there was one joke where he says going to take the stiffness out of the propeller, going to make the make it limp by like a banana peel. That's the only <laughs> thing that was entirely interesting about this episode, outside of um, I did evil. like I did like the way the landlord said that. <laughs> what he lives here with a vengeance, or with a vengeance, he lives here. I, I that was I don't know, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. yeah, you're right about that, Nick. I guess he did plan on using his psychic powers to take down the planes. I mean, something. Use the psychic powers for something. Like, do something. Yeah. Something, people. Something. I, I guess like, he figured like, he couldn't get the anti-aircraft cannon, so he was going to use psychic powers to... This episode could have used Nan Adams. <laughs> it could have. could have used stuff. But this episode could have used anything. Anything, Dude, we needed Jacob. the devil anything. or Mr. Death to show up. Nan Adams was going to make an appearance, uh. but she got out and was having exhaust problems. And she looked at her <laughs> car and said, that muffler's nice, but it's exhausted. <laughs> you know Jacob. what this episode needed? Percival Smithers. <laughs> yes. Anything. At least a, at least a jungle had guy being chased by fake animals. At least there was something that happens. There's nothing. Like, uh, I don't want to hear a guy bitch for 25 hours. There's nothing that happens <laughs> in this episode but besides him almost getting eaten by his pelican or whatever. <laughs> this, this is where we go have problems. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, man, we're going places. This I might be this might be that episode. Yeah, this can't. Well, okay. Yeah, Raymond, hold there. me. I can't afford to see my <laughs> okay. co-host fight. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and put this out there. Can real. you hold a 2D object? How does that? Probably work? not. <laughs> this episode was not good. I I not even concede. I agree. This there. is the Pluto of episodes. We don't however, talk about it anymore. However, oh my god, not you you honest. disparage Pluto, you asshole. It's the planet X. Um, however, it, while it's not good, it is coherent dish. I mean, the whole thing about, you know, how did he come to that conclusion? There's never a time that I was just like, what the fuck is going on? I knew what was going on. I just didn't give a shit. So yeah, it's well, not a good episode. A... But then when you compare it to something like The Trouble with Templeton, which I know we're going to get there, and some of our bottom rung episodes, some of them motherfuckers just didn't make sense. Some of them I'm like, I still to this day don't know what the fuck happened in that episode. But so yeah, I, I think I, you can be coherent and still just be a terrible thing. It's just oh no, it's not like, good. I, I didn't say it was good. I just it's coherentness in its in storytelling. That's that that has um you know value <laughs> as compared to non coherentness. Like tell me what happened in the trouble with Templeton. Tell me um, <laughs> uh, uh, this guy. guy. Is... The the theater guy was uh, kind of that was the episode where he tries to assassinate like, Lincoln, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, and the fucking jungle was just that was just terribly executed. Oh my god, that was so fucking. I mean, bad. at least at least the, at least in the fever guy gets chased by a, a, a gambling machine and falls out a two foot window. Yeah, I mean no, this guy. I mean, just I understood the fever. Yeah, and this is it's not good. I'm not saying this is a good episode. I did so. listen to your guys' review of Trouble with Templeton today, just to. See if it was what your opinions were. Was it just us yelling at it. things? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember uh, that episode. It's this? probably just you. <laughs> but yeah, it's the guy that like he's decided coast through life until he dies, and then at the end he decides to not do that because. Explain to me what happened when he went to that bar. Uh, <laughs> I, know, I was like, that was like what three months ago. Dead wife. Is. Danced a lot. What? Because I believe you guys said she wanted to fuck his best friend. I don't remember. Hey, first of all, first of all, I think I think it, I think in a week from now we're not even gonna remember what happened in this episode. So I mean, well, we if remember anything what happened, happened in this episode, we a would little person maybe have. Something I will to not forget yeah. Pete the parrot. Right, yeah. Pete the parrot's great. Well, let me let me let me talk about the ending real quick. So, yeah, so he's like, say, just... it's 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 gonna be a half hour, and it finally reaches that half hour. Like, thank God! And it's like, oh, look at all the whole people are gonna turn into two foot monsters or whatever, and then he turns into a two foot dick. And uh, I really? swear, I thought the like, thought is the he circumcised or uncircumcised? I don't know. He's a two foot dick. You know, this is nineteen sixty two. 
Yeah. Yeah. Probably in circumstance. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's anything like that show, Naked Attraction, it, apparently none of them are <laughs> circumcised. Um, so, anyways, I, I don't hey, know. What, just, what show? You said Naked. On HBO no. Max, there, on HBO Max, there's a show called Naked Attraction, which is literally like the most superficial, super superfluous uh, like uh, dating show where basically this person comes on and gets uh, six people that they get to look at, and they're all like stark naked, like. Uh, full frontal and they talk about all kinds of sexual content it, it's it's one of the most superficial shows i've ever seen and because they go on dates them it, cool it reveals that. them like it's an australian from, from show the feet from the feet up so it you slowly see yeah everything. you get to yeah you see literally everything but the face it's, is it's, the it's, last thing that you see actually you know that you know raymond this show this this episode would have been good if it was called naked attraction <laughs> <laughs> damn it's been on the air for 11 seasons yeah it's 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 That's crazy. australia for you I'm gonna need to look at this. My They're not prudes only... over there in Australia. We had what uh, yeah, said I'm naked and naked afraid. Person. We had naked and dating or dating naked or <laughs> yeah. No, this like is that. like straight up like MA like X rated show. Oh, it's fucking yeah, crazy. That... No, what I'm You're talking about like tonight. going down on people and shit. Really? <laughs> You're gonna get it's a, yeah. You get bored really quickly because I'm gonna have to re up my max subscription. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, what we learned out of this is Jacob's gonna watch Naked Attraction and Triv is gonna watch the 1995 Australian film Mushrooms. Hell yeah! <laughs> all already, I know is already got it queued up on Tubi. Yeah. Well, I mean, all no I know is I watched Red Letter Media's uh, Halloween special with they reviewed Chopping Mall, Scare Death, nice. and The Exorcist Two: The Heretic. Oh God! And I was I was listening to him talk about Exorcist Two. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? The Exorcist Two looks terrible. Yeah, yeah but they're good at making things funny. But you put Linda, you put Fletcher, at least Fletcher. In there. You put Which fucking Louise Fletcher in there, and you make it terrible. Like Louise Fletcher yes. was a great actress. That doesn't mean jack shit. There's been bad a- or good actors in bad movies across the history of movies. You get John Borman to direct it. I mean, come on. Jacob's up, up in his max. How the hell? How the Damn. hell do you? Do you know how hard it would be to follow up The Exorcist? Like, even if it was good, it wouldn't. That's be why you good. don't follow up The Exorcist, Triv. I you don't agree. do it. Well, Exorcist, Exorcist is not, was not bad. It was excellent. I enjoyed it very much. The Exorcist two. Yeah, but you guys three. like three. 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 Oh, three. Three. Yeah, three. 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 Yeah, three. Three was actually trying. I don't think two was trying. I think two was a cash grab. Fuck you, uh, man. But. But no, uh, yeah. So God, I told everybody, I'm, I'm fucking everybody. Apparently, I'm sorry. Damn, Triv. <laughs> it happens. You know, yeah. No wonder why you're 2D. You have 2D STDs. Too many. 2D. No, I don't. Animated STDs, just like no, flowing all. Where is is one of those Point STDs? A killer, me. killer pineapple. No, they're all in the cup. Exactly. That's why. That's that's why it's over there, and I'm over here. Uh, exactly. Your computer's full of STDs. Or no, no my computer is a potato. There's a difference. But so, yeah, so guy gets turned into a two foot dick and, you know, giant set. And that's the end of the episode. Thank God. Well, actually, I think what they forced perspective. I think it, well, I think actually what they did was they filmed him in a tiny little area and then they superimposed that over top of the the bigger, like, like still of the know. screen. It looks like they built a two, like a giant set. Like, no, like look I'm at, sure look at Ross Sterling. Look at Ross in the uh, during the next up episode. He's like two feet tall or whatever. He's like way taller. Dude, it's way a shorter. giant ass Cracker Barrel. I don't know. I've never seen Hocus Pocus and Frisbee. Is it? Is it like? Are they really small people? No, it no, no. It's that's a normal. It's a normal general store. I think I mean, it's Cracker just Barrel you're sucks up... anyway. So I mean, no, it it's like a general store. Like a Cracker Barrel is an actual barrel that has crackers in it. He's actually watching the episode, aren't you? I am. Um, I can hear. I can say. He is, yeah. You can see what they did. If you look at it, you can see what I mean. It's well done. It's kind of like tell. what they did with Fay Ray and in, in King. Oh, Kong. I thought you were yeah. watching Naked and Afraid. Oh no, that's pulled up too. But um, <laughs> I'm not watching that yet. Uh, no, on him you can see there's like these little squares on the wall. One of them is dark. The one right behind him is darker, and you so can yeah, see that's what they like did with Fay Ray and, and and yeah, it's it's Fay Ray. Yeah, and but they King do a close up on him, don't they? And it's like a giant set. Well, it's, well, that part, yeah, they do a close up, but I think it. Well, yeah, I guess that is. They built at least part of it. Yeah, right there. Oh, because it's okay. got like a big cup. I stand corrected. I'm giant sorry. Pencil. 
That's what she said. I apologize. Now. Apparently... Please forgive me. Was anybody surprised that this was going to happen, or did you guys? No. Say, well, what they nah. said the four o'clock thing. I was like, "Yep, yeah, you're going down." My that, that's only a problem. question about the ending is: Did it work on the world? That is a good question. Because he says, "Look out there, Pete. They're all going to be ants." But is he seeing them? Is this happening? Or is this a center I mean... for ants? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is in a high sky, a high rise building, so they may look like ants to him. So, I mean, I don't know. The thing is, it keeps referring to them as ants, and that like two foot tall is not an ant. You know, you know what would made this episode better if it was about uh, two priests in you know a convent, and they have a relationship together, and you know (laughs) they touch each other, and it gives them like chills and. (laughs) You know, it, it was started like Robert Downey Jr. and Tobey Aguirre and I mean, <laughs> I mean, what's the harm in like instead we get this nonsense or maybe, you know, guy going on a rampage, killing people on Thanksgiving. I mean, come on, let's get something. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's wolf, wolf people. Instead, we get a guy in Where a room women of the talking FF? on the phone. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I like Jacob's like, are they just going to make all the uh, Grindhouse trailers into movies? I think they should. Wait, no, Rob Zombie's Werewolf Women of the SS. God, can you imagine making that movie? It'd be fucking terrible. So, yeah, that's four o'clock. All right. Final thoughts? Final ideas? Logic? Oh, no, shit. Yeah, thank you, Jacob. I just remembered that. Jacob, hit us up with the closing closing narration, (laughs) which I didn't forget, I promise. Mm -hmm. Not at all. all. At least we're not doing the (laughs) opening narration right now. Jacob, hit us with the opening narration. At four o'clock, an evil man made his bed and lay in it. A pot called a kettle black. A stone thrower broke the windows of his glass house. You look for this one under F for fucking terrible and J (laughs) for junk in the (laughs) twilight zone. (laughs) Oh my God. That's awesome. I feel like I have Jacob on board. (laughs) <laughs> i think Trez is the most positive out of all of us but, i'm always uh, the actually, most positive i i I, I, I did that joke but i don't well we'll see well you know i say that let's let's look at the let's look yeah at the, uh, but know. anyways do you guys have any final thoughts any final things you want to bring up about this episode before we go into the uh, rankings list nope just, just that this guy he's what we hate now Oh yeah, and he, he is who we thought he was. Yeah, and it's just that was a football reference, by the way, Jacob. Oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> you lost me, but I, I, I do they are yeah. who we thought they are. <laughs> yeah, I do think that he is very. It is a uh, he is very much just like cancel culture. I mean, you know, of course, without the turning people small thing, but it is kind of like they want to do that. They go and they attack people and want to make them so small that they're irrele- irrelevant and gone and destroy their lives, regardless like, of uh, if what they did was really that bad or even happened. It doesn't even matter nowadays. Like the the wife, I do think that was an interesting part of the wife coming in and saying, I mean, my husband was doing his fucking job. He can't save everybody. He was like, that's not an excuse. He should have saved this person. He's, she's like, he was saving other people is busy it's not his fault and that's kind of like how it is nowadays people don't look at things rationally they're just like oh my god they did this thing supposedly somebody said they did this thing that's all they need so they must be thrown off the face of the earth made two feet tall and just go away and that i mean that's cancel culture and that's essentially what this guy was doing i mean the execution wasn't great but what it was talking about was kind of relevant now yeah See, that's all. That's what I was saying earlier was it's a for all the other shit about this. The message is timeless. It's just delivered with a ham. It's ham fisted. Quite honestly, if we were talking about this in 2005, 2010, I don't think it would have the relevance that it has now. Still wouldn't be good. Um, But at least there's that. I mean, it does have like kind of a, a, a nowadays relevance that. Like back then, this seemed so like when you're if you're watching this in 1962 or three, it's probably like this is ridiculous. This is so See, I don't agree with that, though, because I do think you would have those 
having yeah. seen what happened in the 50s like the, the red scare and all that stuff and all of the things that came about that right. i think i think you would have had not the true. same not the same kind of variation but yeah i think you would have i guess it all known. just comes back around oh 100%. because well by the time like the 70s and or at least definitely the 80s and 90s rolled around this type of thing would have just been like come on kid, kid nobody's Grow up, Shut basically. Up. Yeah, nobody, nobody would have like, taken any of this serious. I guess it would have been relevant back then too. You have a very good point, but like, like I said, there's a solid thirty or so years there that we would have just looked at this and been like, "That's just so over the top." Not the shrinking part, but the like yeah. telling on people and trying to have them, you know, eradicated. Um, but then you come around to modern day, and all of a sudden, oh well, still not good, but hmm. It's not so over the top and crazy that somebody yeah. would do something like this. Do and that's the worst this, thing. So. I was going to say, do you think this is close enough to the Red Scare and everyone's a communist thing that? Oh yeah. It it, it would be dismissed. Like I'm saying, the opposite. Like them people were crazy, and that's kind of what this actor thought. Like I said, this actor was an anti-McCarthy era guy, and he did this to kind of make them people look stupid. Do you think it's close enough that they're like, oh, that person's crazy? And then, as you said, like 20 years later, like, oh, we can start prank calling people and insulting people again. And now we're <laughs> far enough away that the next generation doesn't remember McCarthyism. Yeah. I think then they did. I don't think, like, like you said, if a decade or so later no i think i don't think people it was far enough away at that point that i think people were like what come on get over yourself yeah well it's i will crazy. say this and i and it's it's kind of in the same vein but i think it was done with a little bit more nuance but it was a very visually clear message there's an episode of the original star trek series where there's two groups of people on a planet one has mm -hmm. white their faces are both white and black one has white on the left side the other one has white on the right side and they they are unconsolable. Like they can't they cannot reconcile their differences, despite the fact they are essentially the same thing reversed. And that's yeah. kind of like everything back then. Kind of had that very straightforward, kind of in, in a way face. ham fisted, yeah, a very clear, straightforward execution. But that did it a hell of a lot better than this did. And I I don't I don't know where I was going with that other than to say that there was other stuff like this like this kind of thing back then but it was done better i think in the 60s i mean there was still some of that stuff going on for sure but it was kind of coming to an end uh, it wasn't as predominant as like say the 50s yeah but um i think people still definitely remembered it. i think people put two and two together when watching this episode for sure so i think oh, that the it actors... would have been you would have had to have been a complete nutter numpty to not be able to get the message of this one i think yeah anybody who was watching the twilight zone at least they were like yeah i get i get that yeah, I, I kind of need how it all comes back around, though. I mean, no, I mean, it's not neat. It kind of sucks. But... <laughs> yeah, it's <crazy. laughs> well, it's a pendulum. I mean, look at you can you can look at history and the pendulum swings left and right. You know, I will say this much. At least back then, they had like a true actual threat to be scared of. And they were saying these things. Nowadays, it's just because people ain't got shit better to do. A lot of the time, not all yeah. of it. I'm not sitting here saying, you know, no, we everybody get, who's been called dude, out. Is, we get it. We get it. No, a worries. lot of people have been called out. And it's like, I mean, you got any proof? Anybody That's like, why I called it takedown culture, not cancel culture. Because people that get canceled usually did do something wrong. But the takedown culture of when you were a teenager, you said something wrong. And now you're 30 years old and you should be fired from your job because you made a dirty joke. 15 years ago like mm -hmm. that's what people want to do now you committed one crime you're never allowed to have a job again yeah that's ridiculous and that's where we're at now and that's what this guy is trying to do is this guy had 400 patients 399 of them did great and one died we should burn him at the stake because he didn't save all 400 that's how it works, though, man. I mean, like, that one, that's the front page news. Yeah. Doctor lets man die due to yeah. negligence. And it's like, well, what about the other 500 people he saved? You know, is there is value in that. You know, we don't, people don't look at that. Yeah. There's no room well, for, for, for multiple opinions and multiple, like, there's no gray. Everything's black and white. Absolutely. And I do think that that was, that's why I said the woman coming, I think, wasn't bad because she was showing 
hey, uh, here's like the other side. She was right. giving her take on the other side. So now I still stick by. I don't think it was necessarily all done well, but I think that the the idea was sound. Yeah, I will say too with the lady, you got to see like his response when confronted. Oh, it's the same. You you confront someone with with you know. Hey, well, this is this is what's actually going. Shut the fuck up! You're changing. You're you're trying to like get in my head and change my narrative. What I think? Fuck off! Yeah, <laughs> you know. I actually saw a thing on uh, Twitter, the Internet Hall of Fame account. Oh, that's a great account. <laughs> it's a great account, and this guy says, "Oh, you know, doxing people is illegal." And the guy says, "Okay, show me the law." They send him the PDF. He says, "I'm not going to fucking read that." The internet. It's exactly yeah. what Jacob's saying. Like, oh, here's. Here's something I believe. Here's 900 articles that say it's not true. Why are you trying to say things that I say aren't true? Are you targeting me? But How yeah. dare what you, you try about? and change my opinion on what a YouTuber said? Right. Or it's all it's all mainstream bullshit. Uh, I only trust this one guy on YouTube that likes to smoke a hookah. Get out of my echo chamber. I trust nobody. I trust none of you guys. Who are oh, you guys? Man. Well, I, I just got. I mean, I'm a flat 2D <laughs> rendering of a person that exists in cyberspace. There you go. I just got. I got one thing to say about this episode, and one thing only. It comes from the great movie called Scrooge, and the quote reads from Frank Cross: "The bitch hit me with the toaster." <laughs> <laughs> That's what that this is... episode feels like. I got hit in the, by a bitch with the toaster. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I didn't I, I, I... <laughs> no <worries. laughs> Yeah, I got man. one thing to say in addition to that. I feel like this episode Mystery is kinda... fuck you. <laughs> All of our talk about complaining of uh, people trying to change our opinions. Let's rank the episode in. <laughs> Argue Dude, about ran- our opinions. Raymond's ranking us in. Like, ranking us in. <laughs> yeah. All right. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and head into the last segment, which, of course, is the Twilight Zone ranking list. The greatest ranking list because three eggs, fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, We're denuding all, uh, everything. We must denude right. this episode. Yes. Uh, so with that said, I had to put this at the bottom. Start from there. 90, 94. I'm putting it at number three. You would. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, Jacob, I, I'll concede to that. We'll put it at uh, number 31. <laughs> oh, I know what you did, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, no, I'll start with uh, uh, just right above the jungle. Yeah, I the trouble with Dumbledore, as Jacob has said 400 times, makes no fucking sense. Why was he going back in time? The only thing we accomplish is that. He's slightly less miserable now, and we needed time travel for that. It wasn't even that he went back in time. It was that he went back in time, and it's like the people that he went back in time, they all knew he was back in time. Like, it was like a set, like a play. But then it was back in time. Was it a fuck? It's like they were aware, but he wasn't. Like, when he walked away, they are all like, I was like, what the fuck is going on here? (laughs) They don't like his ass. Uh, yeah. Static, of course, is old man makes kid carry up uh, TV so or radio. <laughs> static the jungle so is man boring. gets chased by fake fake animals and then gets eaten by a lion. Um, I, I'll be honest with Good you, idea, fever's bad, this huh? oh, the fever is better this episode. Oh, the fever is like like leaps and bounds above this episode. Like it's fun think, compared to this shit. Yeah, I could deal with the fever over this. I mean, I'm cool with that. Honestly, putting it at well, what would that be? Ninety one. Yeah. Uh, ninety. Or yeah, ninety one. Yeah, yeah, ninety one. Yeah, like Jacob said, at least the fever has a narrative. It's terrible. Yeah, but at least something happens, and you know what's happening the entire time. It's got Franklin. Yes. Yeah, and it's got people not caring that this guy just fell out of a two foot window. You know, just leave him there. <laughs> the jungle yeah. is nonsensical. Just guy running eat, tigers show up in the middle of the street and yeah there's shit that happens and... in that one too like the guy the the cab driver didn't he just die yeah he just yeah, dies he's like so. just fucking de- dead no reason just lions and tigers and death cat he got out of the line. car like ah, oh well dead <laughs> and just walked off like it was no thing i was like <laughs> the static is another super low stakes one like trouble with templeton where a guy listens to an old radio and then listens to an old radio again. And, <laughs> like, 
I'm so I, I think it's still I fell valid. That episode. I'm getting sleepy talking about that episode. Uh, it's still okay, valid guys. the one where like everybody's everybody's like not real frozen. or everybody's like frozen. Yeah, that's, that movie, they're that's all frozen. Bad too. Yeah, and it's got like the the hillbilly guy who's who's like a demon or whatever. Yeah. No, he's a witch. I think yeah. he has like the the book that says witchcraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to be straightforward with that. And then he got the episode like the shelter where there's like a whole bunch of people like trying to vie for shelter. I mean, this is so much better than that. I, I think anything is better. Than, <laughs> I think everything is worse than the shelter. Shelter is a good oh. movie or episode. I'm kidding. I'm because I said I was going to. So, if you're movie. not kidding, you mean it. Brim, you were the most positive. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most positive about this episode so where are you oh my God. Like, no i agree i think i think between the fever and the jungle sounds like a, a good solid spot for this because it does blow massive goats and i have proof i mean can <laughs> so we get, can we move episodes. the jungle up one you want to put the jungle above this so 90 and 91 will be jungle fever just <laughs> <laughs> switch the paper in the jungle <laughs> We could go see, static jungle hey, Jacob. fever. Jacob is see, just Jacob, trying see the to one? set a precedent for changing things. So <laughs> later see, Jacob, on, there's, there's, like... hey, see, <laughs> there, there's a problem to me. Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, there's a problem though. You, when we get to the end of the series, I'm only gonna let you change one thing. You can either change the jungle fever or uh, what was it, or take the invaders and put it at the bottom. <laughs> Oof! What, what that? That doesn't make no goddamn sense. <laughs> no, no, or uh, perchance a dream. You can only have one of those decisions. Well, fever jungle it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like how Jacob's like, what the fuck are you talking <laughs> yeah. so you talk about? Willis? Uh, Willis shit. Low stakes. Yeah, I'm decision. okay with that because... Like we said, the static in trouble with Dumbleton are so low stakes that we basically don't change anything. You know what? All. I will say, I will say this, and I know that I just said that I was okay with it being below the fever, but honestly, it's such a piece of shit, and the guy in it is such an absolute goddamn piece of. So yeah, number ninety four. I agree. I kind of, I kind of want to put it there just to be massively spiteful. What ninety four? I <laughs> yes. agree. Because he deserves it as yeah, a person that's, that's to be kinda, the that's worst. Yeah, that's kind of that's me being a spiteful, cynical bitch. I was honestly so unenthralled and uninterested in what was going on that I didn't really give a shit that he was a dick. I was just that's like, fair. no, that's fair. I I have no investment in this episode whatsoever until he became a little person. We do not know how tall Triv is, but he would definitely make a 2D person two feet tall. Oh, Triv's like eight feet tall. You didn't know that? She's like, <laughs> she's like, she she didn't basketball know. She said earlier like she did I have no idea how tall I am. <laughs> yeah, she she's all about the snoo snoo, you know? I think it's on your uh, license. What? <laughs> I don't have a car. I don't have legs. You don't have a 2D car? No, I don't. I have a oh, that'd be theater. hilarious. You just like, you uh, have legs. like those like old legs. 40s cartoons. Them. That once I showed my legs. <laughs> yeah, you, you're like a weeble wobble. I am. I'm weeble wobble, you know, weeble wobble, so. weeble wobble. The problem is, is that if I go too far to this side, my arm gets really weird. It does. It gets you get the strong <laughs> arm. This <laughs> <laughs> <It's> strong. <laughs> <laughs> I get the weird arm with the guy from um, what is it? Scary movie two. Scary movie. He's a strong arm. Yeah. <laughs> With my strong he hand. Mix it up the potatoes. <laughs> Make it up the potatoes. Like, Ugh. or he's like, grab my hand, and the guy's like, no, it just falls. <laughs> it's oh, such a man. terrible fucking movie. That movie had a lot of like, yeah, great callbacks. It some, yeah, it had some good moments. It's definitely of its time, but oh, yeah. um, so back on track. So you guys want to put it at ninety one, four o'clock? Yeah, I guess. Or, or do you want to put it at the bottom? I'll leave it to you guys. I'm I'm good putting it all the way down at the bottom to teach its bitch ass who's boss. But I I also because Good, we don't static... teach anybody bitch ass. We don't teach anybody on this podcast. We talk about penis stretchers, cups of I Uranus. Know, I know. There's no I teaching. Know. I mean, I penis guess we could teach sex ed. We could be our <laughs> own. Like I would rather or... watch this than the trouble with Templeton. See, I don't. I don't. Well, I guess repeat the parrot. He's pretty cool. I don't know. I. Yeah. I would toss out both of them, honestly. I mean, yeah, we're talking about the literal bottom of the barrel. I know, I know. I would, if if you said, hey, we're going to watch an episode and you have to watch it, pick, 
Trouble with Templeton or this? I was, I'm this. Trouble with Templeton seemed like it was, it seemed like one of those hour long episodes you guys were telling me about. Yeah. Fair. It's like Jesus, is this ever gonna end? And what in the ever living fuck? Oh, that I cannot, I cannot, I I can't wait till we get past season four, but I cannot wait to get into season four. And then Jacob goes, I fucking quit, and he walks out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> fuck this uh, shit, fuck you. And fuck I you. am not replacing you, Jacob. I'm not watching them. <laughs> well, it's only like seventeen yeah. of them, isn't it? Yeah, only being the yeah. operative phrase. You're gonna there. have to hodgepodge together. Once again, Jacob. Remember. When we get out of season four, you will be like, "Thank God, perchance a dream is higher on this list." We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We shall see. Ooh. All um, right. So all right, I'm gonna say let's just stick to 91. It's it because it it is it's better than the the jungle and static and the trouble with Templeton. But that's like saying chlamydia is better than gonorrhea. Yeah, yeah. I'm good with that. Is it? I don't know. I just came up with two. I don't. It's like know saying it's... blue waffles are the greatest thing ever. Anyways, what were yeah. you saying, Raven? I, I'm I'm good with that. I don't know whether ninety or ninety one, but I'm I'm okay with ninety one. Put it just ahead of the jungle because it's going to end least... up over hundred. Yeah, it's it's going to end up terrible. So as long as it gets beaten down the list, I'm happy to be here and help it get. Oh, started. we'll make sure to beat it with an ugly stick yeah. and have it hit every branch on the way down. We beat things down here. Yes, we do. Yeah, we beat, beat them hard beat and down. fast. Beat it hard <laughs> down and deep, and then yeah. stretch them. <laughs> and just make them come out of our ears. So the oh, fifth the dimension penis stretchers. <laughs> coming soon to an <laughs> online store near you. <laughs> we're we're going to sell t-shirts that say penis stretcher coming to an online store near you. your penis into the fifth dimension. <laughs> but yeah, we'll settle with that. So new number, <laughs> new number 91 is going to be the, is going to be four o'clock, very low to the bottom, tabs, which yeah. deserves. Number one is still Eye of the Beholder. Number 94 is Trouble with Templeton. Number uh, 77 episode, is a piano in the house. A penis stretcher in the house. <laughs> uh, and as a bonus, Triv got what number piano in the house is right because this is yes, an episode yes. that was not better than it. So it Yay. did not move it on. The <laughs> it did move down the list, so Triv remembered it. So Yay! Anyways, with that said, the next episode is uh, what Triv considers one of her favorites. I know she because she's told me this, and it's actual fact. I like it. It's not like top ten, but I enjoy the episode because it's goofy. It's fun. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. You, you really like this episode, which of course is season three, episode thirty, which is called Hocus Pocus and Frisbee, directed by once again by Lamont Johnson. Uh, oh, tell them to stop directing episodes. <laughs> Uh, written by Ross Serling, stars Andy Devine, Milton Sa- Sesler, Selzer, Peter Bacco, and Howard McNear. So it also has that. a giant cracker barrel. Not the restaurant, but a giant barrel of literal crackers. What the fuck? That's is probably where picture? Cracker Barrel. Go- <laughs> that's, oh, where, that's where that's where that's where Cracker Barrel guys name from. What in the fuck? Exactly. It's the invisible. It's the it's the uh, uh, discount uh, discount invisible man. That's what I was gonna say. Looks like <laughs> we go from absolute bullshit to this. Yeah. The intro to, the at the man. end of this, at the end of this, when they say what the next episode is so weird because he's like, every so often we have a new actor on this show. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's an anthology series. Every episode <laughs> has a new actor. <laughs> so we'll look forward to that. Raymond, thank you for coming on again. Oh yeah. We, we don't have any consolation fun. prizes for you, but we're glad you got us through four o'clock uh in six hours, you know, talking about it. So uh <laughs> would you like to have awesome. a penis stretcher in the house t shirt? <laughs> no or a penis you. torch. I'm... Yes, or a penis, penis torch is coming I... soon. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh, thanks for having me on, guys. It's always fun. Yeah. Uh, Where's your content? Pleasure on our end too. Uh, yeah. Rain, it's what Ray HS1984 yeah, or uh, Raymond H. Smith on Twitter because some other guy that complains about customer service has Raymond Smith. <laughs> so. Nice, 
Nice. Yeah, I look forward to his content. He he definitely brings out some of the weirdest videos I've seen when it comes to like movies. Like I I don't know half these movies you're talking about, but I'm sure they're delightful. You guys have opened my eyes to the world of movies and how pretty much anyone can make a movie and it can be really really strange but yes. you know it's great content so jacob <laughs> jacob he's yeah. he's like look, look forward to my upcoming videos on a rock space opera and steel in lace which is apparently about a woman who dies and her brother brings her back to life as an android to <laughs> kill the people that testified on behalf of her rapist so oh so it's like rotor yeah an 80s it, movie that started out kind of a family kids movie that ended up being something like that with like the girlfriend who turned into a robot and started murdering people am i remembering that i wrong? think it was called mr right <laughs> was that what john make it mr right yeah <laughs> uh jacob you yes. have content and do. you do things uh, we're still waiting on your next series, which I'm sure will be awesome. But where is that located? <laughs> it's exploding. <laughs> Double jab. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, shit. On my YouTube channel. Retro JKXY, where you can find video game history documentary thingies that I make here in this room. For your pleasure. I in my voice and stuff and talk about old <laughs> shit. <'cause I'm> old. <laughs> yeah, come check that out. I've got a new and coming sometime in the future depending on when you're watching this it could have already came or it might be <laughs> coming you'll just have to go there and check it out see if you can figure out which it is but uh yeah that's the company has been looking at too many penis torch videos and now he yeah your penis his torches in the mail sir <laughs> <laughs> Also, weirdly, since you've got the two eyes up and your nose or your your chair kind of curves around like a nose, it looks like you're sitting like in front of a yeah. It's kind of like a nose or kind of oh, like a there's face. something coming. Out, there's something coming out of his nose. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. There's something oh, yeah. coming out of her nose. <laughs> oh shit, space balls. Hey. Oh shit, there goes the planet. Goes the planet. <laughs> All right, uh, Triff, you also have content. It's located in many places and many things. It explodes all over us when you post a video. Where's that at? <laughs> um, it comes I, out of Uranus. I, I mean, I, I'll offer to pay for the car wash to take care of all the things that explode all over you, I think. Uh, <laughs> all the trip uh, milkshakes come out from the boys from the yard. Oh, my God. Damn straight. Um, it's true. Can... better than yours. You can find my, <laughs> my non-jiggly uh, body. Uh, here on YouTube, uh, I do random, obscure, and straight to bed movies. Uh, my next one up is a collab on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's about two weeks late. I promise Ooh. it is coming uh, hard and soon. Um, I'm oh, also yeah. doing uh, uh, blood-sucking pharaohs from Pittsburgh uh, coming up here shortly. So that should be fun. But uh, yeah, keep track of what was supposed to be a full month of content is not a full month of content. But we're doing what we can, so we'll get there when we get there. So. So yeah, when Trip records a video, it's usually about eight months before it pops up. So because she 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 lives in the twilight zone, she's sorry. shrinking. Mm-hmm. No, I'm kidding. Wrong I'm kidding, Trip. I'm sorry. Uploading sorry. at four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> gonna turn everybody. That's when all. You, that's when it only takes two minutes and not six hours to upload. True. Oh uh, shit. So anyway, how about I you, Nick? I, you I'm somewhere on in, the the, in the world of YouTubes and movie emporiums and content. Uh, yeah, I saw Exorcist of the Believer. That was a thing. Um, I posted <laughs> another review. I don't know. These things I do for this place that I call Movie Emporium. That's where this channel is held. Audio feeds are Anchor, SoundCloud, and all that good stuff. So look forward to there. Please rate, subscribe. But with that said, we're finally getting out of this awful, awful episode, and we're going to move on to the next week's episode. And for myself, Triv, and Jacob, and Raymond, we'll see you guys next time in the Twilight Zone. Peace out, motherfucker! Peace, Twitter! They were older. They were My God, we are spending so much time just rambling. Nick, I well, just I mean, want to th- wish you luck editing this nonsense. <laughs> this is gonna oh, you know, you, you should do that every week because you should see it every week. Like, we'll be talking for four hours, and I'll get it down to like an hour and ten minutes. It's just, just us that talking. good. <laughs> yeah that's it you just um, enjoy each other's company so much yeah that's what it is <laughs>